I feel fantastic. Like I feel like uh, I have a shot to do something great this season too. Especially, I mean, we lost two great gut runners, Isai and Rory, but we really have a re uh, good strong team this season too. So we're hoping to win what, win it again this season. Especially like when we tie last year with NAU. So I feel like we're coming this season more motivated with no pressure, you know. Hopefully we're gonna do something great. How does it feel to be a Big 12 cross country champion again? Yeah, it's not the first time, not the second time. It's the fourth time back, back to back to back to back. That's an incredible feeling. I mean, uh, we really had a really good strength team and it was, it was like really good to go out there and uh, perform and see where we are. And I'm, I was so happy and I'm excited for national, regional and national upcoming weekend. Fawad Masoudi. How many other Big 12 teams have won back to back to back to back titles? I don't think so. It is so many, I think. It's like, you know, like a few teams have done that before. And we're one of them, you know. Oklahoma State hosted the NCAA Cross Country Midwest Regional. How did hosting that give you guys the competitive advantage by being on your home course? Yeah, it's a, it's a great feeling to be, to be racing regional on our own course. Yeah, we're like familiar with our course and uh, we know every, every move, every step in this course. We've been training like the entire season in this course. So we kind of like prepare and uh, it gives us like adventures like uh, besides the other team because we, we have a great idea about how we should run in our course, when we should move. So that's, uh, that's like a big, that's a big step for us like uh, one week before going to the big stage at national. How does Oklahoma State's course compare to others that you've competed on? Yeah, I will say this course is the toughest one that I've ever been to. You know, it's known by the heads and stuff. Every team, like they came in here, they know the course are hard. So you have to be prepared like mentally and physically to be able and perform in this course. And when we go, outside this course and running in a different university, it feels like way easier than uh, what we do here. Running is a part of training for a lot of other sports, but only a part of it. How do you train for cross country when running is all that you do? I will say for cross country, it's kind of different than track. You know, for cross country, you gotta do a lot of mileage. You have to be like consistency in your practice. You have like to show up and try and like to give like 100% every day and try to get like enough sleep, like recovery, you know, but I mean, for track, you only do like a short distance, you know, like a 15 or like a 5K, it's not like doing a 10K at the course. So you have, you have to have like uh, more mileage in your legs, more volume. That's why like, uh, this is what you need for cross country. It's just like, keep trying, keep like running every day. Like even like if you want to double, it's just, like running, 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 yeah. When did you first start to enjoy the sport of running? Uh, so I started running in the age of 12, but the first time when I started enjoying, like when it was like my first time traveling outside, like making the team, it was like, uh, it's like some school stuff. It was like Arabic championships. And that was my first time like taking a flight and going to another country and compete. So this is the time when I realized that, okay, I should like do that more often. This is the time when like uh, kind of switch it from like, uh, like a habit to like a daily basis. I have to do that every day. You said that's the first time you got on a plane and got to travel. Yeah, that's what makes me, that one makes me like thinking, okay, I should try this one. I should give it a hundred percent. It may work, it may. <laughs> I think it worked. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what are some of the coolest places you've got to travel and compete for cross country or track and field? Yeah, I've been to a lot of places before. I would say France, I would say Spain too. That was cool, yeah. That's the two places that like touch me, you know. Uh, and now when I go back to, when I go back home, when I find some times I 
usually like go to France and spend some time like with my friends there because like all my friends living in France now so I go to see them sometimes. Where's home for you? Uh, we'll see so right now home is yeah being in Stillwater and being in a cowboy family you know but I'm from Morocco yeah and my family lives in Morocco everyone is Morocco yeah my friend too I grew up there and then uh, when I was 13, I had to leave my family and move to the national team. It's like kind of 500 miles away from my family. So I spent like my teenager there. Yeah, kind of like training and uh, being at school. So you haven't lived with your family since you were about 13 years old? Yeah, I was like, uh, I get the chance to, sh to see them like in a vacation or like holidays or stuff. Yeah. How hard was that for you? It was really hard, you know, like you being a teenager, you need like uh, to be around your family. And I had to kind of like, uh, like kind of, kind of choose like my career, you know, this is, this is, that was the move to be like a better runner in the future. How did you end up coming to Oklahoma State from Morocco? So it was like uh, one summer, I was like just like sitting in my, room and then uh, I had some friends they were already here and then they talked to me about like if you want to join like being a, in a NCA and stuff and I had no idea what is that mean like what is like collegiate athlete means and then there is some university trying to reach me in uh, Instagram and then it is like Coach Justin and Coach Dave they talk to me and they explain what's going on here about like hey if you want to like get the opportunity to be in a college and study and practice at the same time. I was like, okay, that's a cool idea. And I like it and I enjoy it. That's why I came here. Had you ever been to America before coming to Stillwater? No, I never been. I never been here. What was your first reaction when you got to campus? Was, I mean, I was obsessed with watching like American movies and stuff. And when I first got here, I was like, oh, that's like a movie, like for real. I'm living in a movie now, not, not just watching it from a TV. It was really cool. It was like American dream, you know, for everyone. It's uh, really cool to be here. What are some of your favorite American movies? Ah, uh, I watch uh, so many. I like, uh, I would say The Dark Knight. Yeah, that's my favorite one. It's a good one. Yeah, Batman too. How often do you get back to Morocco? I usually go once a year, like just in uh, after the season, like after the outdoor season, like over the summer. Yeah. Morocco and Stillwater are very different. How would you compare them if you could even compare them? I would say, yeah, it's a huge difference, you know, if you want to compare like cultures and stuff, it's like different. Uh, I don't think so you can compare, you know, it's if you want to compare, it's like busy too many stuff. So I would say like Oklahoma has like their unique stuff and us in Morocco, we have like our unique stuff. So, I mean, but you can like balance them, you know, sometimes. What was the hardest part of adjusting to life here in Stillwater? Uh, it's my first year when I got here, like my, you know, like coming from a, uh, different country, living your family and stuff. Not like when I was in national team, my mom just can take like the car or like the bus or she can see me not here. Like if something happened back home, I'm not gonna get the chance to go and see them in like a few hours. So that's the hard thing. Also like, uh, I would say like language, you know, for the first couple of weeks, you'll be like struggling when people speak fast. You're like, ah, oh, I didn't get what he's saying. So that was the hardest stuff. Also like uh, in school, you know, everything was in English. So I have to, I have to put myself in a environment where everything is in English. So I have to be, to get adjusted like quickly. How much English did you speak prior to coming to Stillwater? I would say 20%. I mean, even if you speak in back home, the people are gonna understand you. But when you came here, you know, like uh, you can't go deeper in your know, speaking. So it was kind of hard a little bit, but I got adjusted really quick. And you said you had friends who were here who helped recruit you. Yeah. Are you able to speak with them in 
your native language? Is, it, is your native language Arabic? Yeah, it's Arabic. Are you able to speak with them now? Yeah, and have I, that? Uh, before I came here, I, so when we talk, we used to speak in Arabic, yeah. But the, so the last two months before I got here, I kind of I kind of like uh, kind of like give everything through to English, you know, starting my new routine in English and everything like starting to learn English because in back home uh, we speak like Arabic and French. So we didn't get the chance to start learning English till like one year before high school. So that was the that was the problem. So if I, yeah. Do you also speak French? Yeah, I do speak French. French, Arabic, and, and English. English. Yeah, that's very impressive. Oh, thank you. Very impressive. What are some of the things that you miss the most about Morocco? So this is obvious. It's my family, and I would say the food. I like the food in back home. I can't eat anything without worry. What is that? Not like here. You have to read everything. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the most thing that I miss back home. What's your go-to food back home? Uh, we have like, a, I would say diversity in back home. We have everything, like any type of food that you want. But I prefer like uh, chicken and rice. Yeah, and we have like a famous dish called uh, couscous. This is like, yeah, this is the best one, I would say. Yeah, I can eat that every day. Do you, do you cook a lot here to get that taste of home? Uh, not really, just uh, just some time to refill your body, you know, not a big chef. <laughs> it's shifting from sort of summer to a little fall to the cold winter weather. How does the weather here compare to the weather back home? I get really cold here sometimes. I used to be in a snow city because uh, since uh, I turn in altitude, so it's snowing, but not that cold, you know, being here, it feels like freezing. Sometimes it's like, uh, like neg like uh, zero Fahrenheit and it feels so cold and people were like walking shirt like just with t-shirt. People don't have coats here. Yeah, what are you doing? I was like impressed. When you do get to go back to Morocco once a year, what are the things about the United States that you miss or that you wish you could find there? Uh, we don't have Chipotle, I think. <laughs> so I miss Chipotle sometimes. <laughs> I love that. What's your go-to Chipotle order? Oh, just, oh, I, it's simple, you know, just burrito with like rice, chicken, and yeah, guac. guac, no? guac. Yeah, oh, I love guac. National championship coming up this weekend. How are you feeling going into those? I feel great. Yeah, we've been doing some really good workouts. I increased my mileage. I feel fantastic. Like, I feel like uh, I have a shot to do something great this season too, especially, I mean, we lost two great runners, Isai and Rory, but we really have a re uh, good, strong team this season too. So we're hoping to win what, win it again this season, especially like when we tie last year with NAU. So I feel like we're coming this season more motivated with no pressure, you know. Hopefully we're gonna do something great at National. You said you increased your mileage. Approximately how many miles do you think you run a week to train? It's uh, between 85 miles and 95 a week. 85 to 95 a week? Yeah, that's what I do. What's the average length of a run? I would say I think 14 a day or something like that. It depends, you know, sometimes I do 17, sometimes we do 13, yeah. Are you doing that at once or is it a few miles in the morning, a few miles in the afternoon? I don't double here, I just do it at once. Yeah, once. we do our long run in uh, Sundays and workouts on Saturday should be long. Yeah, I don't like doubles because I don't have time to doubles, you know, school's in the morning and we only get the chance to practice once. So I, I rather to get it done in once. How long does it take you to run about 14 miles? So usually for the easy runs, it's not, it, it doesn't depend on how fast you have to run it. Just like get it done, you know, just to feel, to feel good and to feel fresh, you know, just get mileage in your leg. But uh, when you go out for a run, about how long are you out running? Like, uh, like 90 minutes, 40 minutes, uh, 90 minutes, uh, one hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, something like that. That's, it's a lot of miles and not a lot of time. Yeah, it takes a long time.
It's not that long though, 14 miles in about an hour and a half. That's, that's fast. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Nationals are in Charlottesville, Virginia. How long will you guys have to get used to the course, train on the course before the actual competition? I think uh, we only get the chance to run in the course like two times before because we usually flow there two days before. So we do our shake out and pre meet on the course. It's not a big deal, you know, to it's not necessary to run in the course to see if you are good, you are good in, it, in any course. So I don't. Yeah, we only get the chance to run there twice before I think get like an idea where we should move or, you know, get the, the vision in your head and yeah. Cross country wraps up this weekend with nationals. However, your track season continues on with indoor. When does the indoor season officially start? Uh, so last year, my indoor season officially started in December, the early December when I did the 3K. So the same for this season, I will, I think I'm trying to open up in December again. So this is when the end of season open in December and then we have like a month of break and then again, like indoor season. Then after indoor, how long of a break do you have before outdoor starts? Uh, it's like uh, one month. It's not a break. We train for that. You know, we just, we don't race. We need to build up again. And then so you can perform in like uh, April, June and yeah, May and June. So cross country and track teams compete year round, essentially. Yeah, I mean, there is no break in the season. Just if you take, sometime we took like two days, three days, just recovery or if you were feeling sick and then keep, keep going. That's a lot of running. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of running. I'm excited for my next break. <laughs> I mean, next summer. <laughs> <laughs> Last year in indoor, you were on the distance medley relay team that won the national title. What was that like for you and your other teammates in that relay? Yeah, we, before we get there, we already had the uh, collegiate record and everything. So we were like the favorite going there. And that gave us like uh, extra motivation uh, competing against other universities. So it was a fantastic moment to be able to achieve the, to be like a national champion in the, the middle distance relay. So it was incredible and I'm so excited to do that again. So proud of our team. <laughs> yeah, this is what we've been waiting for for a long time. That was, I think, the first time before the university. I'm so proud to be a part of this team. You run cross country, which is longer distance. You've also excelled at the 3000 in middle distance. What is your favorite race to run? Uh, I would say the 1500. Yeah, I want to be more a 1500 guy, but I like doing cross. It makes me like strong physically and mentally. And yeah, I like doing everything. I mean, I just like to win. What's your least favorite race? Uh, going over 5K. <laughs> Yeah. You said there's 10K in cross country though. Are you ever running the 10Ks? I haven't done a 10K in the track. What would happen if your coach said, hey, Fuad, we I need you to fill in right here for this 10K? I mean, if he said that he knows what he's doing. So I'm just gonna say, okay, I'll trust you. I'm just gonna do that. You run 14 miles for training. A 10K is only it's six. Not, yeah, it's nothing, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I, one day I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be like a 10K runner. <laughs> In the future, you know, when I'm gonna lose my speed. <laughs> what do you consider your biggest accomplishment for Oklahoma State track and field? Yeah, it's winning the uh, Devon National Champion DMR and 3K last year in indoor. Missouri with a fantastic rocket shot down the back straightaway. Wow. Ingles is beaten. It is Hamlin or Masuti. Masuti looks back over the inside shoulder. He tried to make that move, it was just a bit too early, but still a great race. 7.44, and he's a wow. happy young man from Oklahoma wow. State. What do you hope to accomplish next? Uh, I would say like uh, winning, doing what I did last year, like winning a national champion again, championships again. And I want to try to like be able to win every single race that I'd be in. So that's the that's the plan for for me next next season. 
Yeah, not in the first times. Oklahoma State's men cross-country team won the Big 12 title this year. Let's say it's a pretty good team. You're on it. How would you describe this year's team? Uh, the team is looking good this season. We already show up in Big 12 and we get the win. We had five in the top 10. That's a really good uh, accomplishment. And we hoping to, to keep continue what we're doing on uh, national stage. To come second in nationals last year, nationals are coming up this weekend. What happened in the race last year? Yeah, <clears throat> so one day before the race, Coach Dave was talking, if we can score like 120 points, we can easily win. And so we were going out there knowing that everyone has to give 100% and got to push as much as you can until the finish line. And everyone did great. We scored, I think uh, it was 86 points. And we saw NEO score 87. And everyone was like happy. And we, we were like extremely happy that we won the national title. And then we saw in the scoreboard 86, 86, we tie. And then I think they go to the sixth guy or something like that. And then we find ourselves getting second. That was like a kind of shock for us, for everyone. Yeah, everyone was kind of upset and hopefully we get it back this season, especially with these great guys. I think we, we can do something great at the national.